Good morning. I wanted to thank everybody for coming out this morning to share in a very special announcement and to hear a little bit about the GRCC nursing programs here and to learn a little bit more about one of our friends of GRCC. Thank you to the median family for everybody coming out and the faculty and staff and for the nursing program taking a break during your retreat, we really appreciate it. So I'd like to introduce Shelly Richter, the department head of the nursing program. Thank you. Um, recently, I had the pleasure of meeting Armin Omedian, getting to know a little bit about him, his wife, Pat, um, their experience in healthcare, and his continued dedication to want to support GRCC's nursing programs. Um, thus, it is really an honor to be here um, representing the nursing programs. As many of you know, our program consists of approximately 300 AD and PN students at any given time, taught by a very dedicated team of faculty. Um, we work hard to ensure that we have a curriculum that prepares students for the future, their future as a nurse and in healthcare. And to do that, we must maintain up-to-date and current, um, you know, condition. We may make sure that we know what's going on in healthcare, and that we continue to support new changes and pr um, procedures and treatments and so forth. A donor like Armin provides a valuable contribution to our department that enable faculty to engage in ongoing learning activities that focus on improved student performance and ultimately better patient outcomes. While success is me measured through achievements like 100% pass rates on licensure exams, it is also evident by successful job placements of our grads in a variety of settings within our community, including Porter Hills, a place for which I know Armin and Pat have a fond appreciation. While GRCC nursing programs have already been the recipient through the support of annual nursing scholarships from the Omedium family, we are indebted to this couple for their continued kindness for the introduction of this gift to nursing faculty. Their generosity will provide our faculty with opportunities to remain current in issues and enhance our ability to adequately prepare students for their future in an ever-changing healthcare environment. At this time, I'd like to welcome Armin up to the stage and again, thank them for their generosity. Just steps at Thank you. <coughs> well, we're here today because it's uh, something to uh, it's something special to honor Pat Median. It's the first that she knows anything about it. <laughs> can tell by the expression on her face. Uh, it's a thrilling, thrilling and exciting day for us. For us, our family, for me. Uh, we're announcing the Pat O'Median Innovation, Innovative Healthcare Fund, or Nursing Fund. It's the same, synonymous the way I'm using it. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to explain the fund I'm going to explain healthcare as I visualize it and why GRCC. We're very proud. I'm very proud of GRCC. Uh, I feel like it's family. Trish and I have been involved in, in, as part of GRCC for the past 10 years, and uh, this is part of the uh, production, the manufacturing, uh, the producing of, of that relationship. We feel very, very good about being part of the GRCC family. You know, when we talk healthcare and nursing, healthcare is a community problem, a community opportunity, and it takes a family, a family approach to bring everybody together to support this activity. So when we're talking about nursing and healthcare, GRCC is the ideal spot to be the leader, to be the point for this kind of activity. And you folks, you folks, your, your faculty and staff and teachers and students are all a part of this.
This page turner is not doing a good job. <laughs> well, we talk about the family. Trish and Andy, uh, you've been very, very helpful and supportive in bringing us along, bringing me along. Uh, I've had some harebrained ideas on things that I think I'd like to do. Uh, one of the things that I've impressed on those two is that I'm interested in something that's living. I'm interested in doing something for a pur something that has a purpose. I'm not interested in monuments. I'm not interested in buildings. I couldn't afford it anyway. <laughs> but it's it's real it's real a live a live thing. And when we talk about healthcare, this is very much very much alive. Uh, the other thing about GRCC, another thing is that the staff and the faculty are very approachable, including Dr. Ender. Of course, I've, I've got a leg up on him. I had two twin brothers older than me, so I had a lot of experience working with twins. So I'll keep watching him. <laughs> He's not here, is he? <laughs> uh, another thing that I found about GRCC, it's a vibrant, vibrant community. Its staff is, vi is active, very approachable. As a student, as an outsider, we can go to anybody, and they'll give us time. They, they uh, I, I keep coming back to the term family. It's an extension of my family. I feel that this is really, that this is really an extension of my family. Just motion it when I drop it down. Okay, why health care? Why nursing? Well, our family is uh, maybe unique, maybe not, but Pat and myself and Pam and Terry uh, are all cancer survivors. And we're, all four of us are very active in the cancer activity in this community. Uh, Kathy has a child, our grandchild, Carrie Ann, who's been at home for 22 years, is not able to talk, is not able to walk, never has been, and she's been doing the arranging the nursing and taking care of nursing that child for over 22 years. So when it comes to health care, we're very much a part of it. We're very much with it, and that nursing and health care are very critical to us. Uh, one of the things that we're facing collectively, <clears throat> excuse me, are there are many challenges coming and many opportunities as part of those challenges. Medi uh, me Medicare, health care and nursing are in for some major, major challenges. It's happening now and as we look forward, it's going to continue to happen and we better be fast afoot to learn where to, where to probe, where to back off, and how to think outside the box. When we talk about innovation, innovation is no, no holds barred. Think, think. Be, be, be dare to do something different. And that goes to, for teaching and for learning. And how important it is to take the next step and say, did my students really learn what I was teaching? Did they really comprehend the value of what I'm teaching? So there are new ways coming to teach. There are new challenges, new approaches. And when we talk about innovation, that's a word that's used many, many ways. Innovation is a system. Innovation includes a lot of things, but it, but it is aggressiveness, it is pursuit, it is having the right attitude, working in the right environment, and GRCC allows us to do that.
So for innovative learning and teaching, what does this mean? Well, we're creating fund in honor of my wife and partner in all that I do on, for all levels of caregiving and innovation is we're in the midst of some severe challenges and change, as I've said earlier. There's some extreme competition going on for the dollars that are available. The dollars don't seem to increase, they seem to decrease. More people want a piece of that action. But the challenge for us is to get as much of that, those dollars as possible, and it's a very, competitive competitive field that we're in where people are all after the same dollar so we have to find ways we have to innovate we have to find ways to use the money we have and we have to find ways to get more money than we currently have there are some trends coming in healthcare one of the trends is that we're all kind of aware of Less and less time in, in hospitals, in healthcare facilities, more time at home, home care. I'm on the foundation board at Porter Hills. I can tell you that we're not building any more buildings. Home care is the way it's going for the older people. But believe me, you younger people are going to not be far behind. <laughs> There's a case, uh, an example that they've taken a look at treating a patient at home for an entire year. And that they, by doing that, they've avoided one hospitalization. One hospitalization. Pat was in the hospital for a week for $22,000 without doctor's fees. That was addition. So what they're saying here is that in this example, this test that they ran, that one year's servicing, coming to the home with doctors, nurses, all kinds of backup PAs, with coming to the home, they could do that for a year at the same cost that it took for one hospital stay. That's a, that's, it's a big one. So what is this Padomedian Fund? It's an idea. It's a beginning. It sure the heck isn't the end. It's, it's just the beginning. And it's to provide a home for healthcare development. The word is development. How much time do teachers have to think? How much time do the faculty have to develop an idea? Well, what we're trying to do is we're, we're going at this and saying, we'll seed the money. But you folks have to help us and others to watch it grow. We have to nurture it. So this is seed money. This is a seed a beginning activity. And it's to give faculty and staff at GRCC an opportunity to lead, to think, to try new approaches, and to be part of something big and exciting to lead the way in West Michigan. So this is the beginning, and I want you, my family, to be some of the first to contribute to this fund. Uh, Dr. Ender, I'm watching him, and he's so good at asking for money. <laughs> he makes a speech like this, and then he says, be prepared because I'm coming at you. And he does. And people smile, and they reach in their pocket and hand them the money. I had a, a session with him not too long ago, or I, I, I asked for the appointment. I came in. He said, I was thinking about you this morning. I said, oh, that's nice. Uh, who should go first, me or you? He, he said, well, why don't you? So I told him what I had, and it was something very positive, and I gave him something. I said, okay, now it's your turn. He said, well, we've got this football team that, that's not in our budget. And, uh, you know, we really, they're good kids. And, and I said, okay, I, I'm in. 
It was, so I asked my family to start, to be donors, to be contributors. I also asked you faculty, staff, students, and all, to choose your support. Choose the way you can support. It could be with work, it could be with money. It doesn't mean big money, this is a beginning. And what we need to do is find a way to spread the idea. To, to let people think and know what we're trying to do. So this is the seed, let's help it grow. Let's lead the way to GR, that GRCC and the Pat Omedian Innovative Learning Healthcare Fund can, can go. So here we are at the end. Now we are, where are you Trish? Now we are offering, or contributing $2,500 to start the program. And uh, we, we think that this uh, is a small amount. It won't, it won't buy any door or buildings, it won't buy any labs, but it's a beginning. And I almost forgot, we've also, Today, we're, we're creating a $30,000 endowment in this same fund, for this same fund, so that there is a basis for others to continue to pay into it. Uh, so I'm at the end. Thank, thank you for allowing the Omedian family to participate with you at GRCC in an exciting adventure into the future. We are a family. Let's move forward together. Thank you. Armin and Pat, um, you have come alongside GRCC um, for many years now, and we are so greatly appreciative of what you do for us, have done for us, and what this fund will do for our faculty, for our nursing program. Um, you said it, you know that things are tight, and what you've done is created opportunity. Created the opportunity for innovation, for our faculty to continue to do the fine work that they do in preparing um, nurses for now and for well into the future. So thank you uh, on behalf of Grand Rapids Community College and the GRCC Foundation, we just say thank you. You're welcome.